Vroom, vroom. <laughs> Look at the black face. Good night, all the oil on me. Be prepared for noise. Yeah. No, they don't look, that looks like one pump, doesn't it? But I suppose if the car's leaning backwards. Yeah, it'll only pick up what's in the oil. Yeah. And there ain't yeah. a lot of oil in there, probably. No, 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 no. I would say that's working all right, though, wouldn't you? Yeah, oh, God, yeah. I mean, I reckon if it well, was... Look. I think if it was dead level... I'd say that's almost a litre there within 10 seconds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Try again. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do it once more. OK. So we think that's working all right. Yeah. So it won't tick over now? No, it's not, it, 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 it's not good, you know. But that's where the balance pipe will work. Yeah. See, look at all that. That's come out of there, John. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's definitely something we've overlooked. Yeah, I'll tell you what, though, it's leaking out of there, John. What, water? Yeah. yeah. See, look, we've got a little water leak here, look. Yeah. See, look, look. Well, the good thing what we probably could have done, we could have disconnected the end pipe, start it up and empty the engine and keep the illness in the engine, not, you know, like forever. Yeah, I, I would say there ain't a lot in there though. No. Because that, you know, that weren't sort of constantly pumping, was it? Yeah, we had not well, That's probably only pumping out what was being put in. That's a serious amount of work. Yeah. If you time that over a minute, that'd be a couple of gallons easy, yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, well, it is twice as big. Yeah. If you look at the, you look at the pump. Yeah, with well, the pipes lot in there. Look, you can see that's a suck out pump. That's a suck out pump, and then that little pump there is the one that puts it in. So it ain't surprising it, it empties the sump a bit lively. We decided to go around corners. The oil can get flung out of here. So what we're going to do? We're going to extend it. So we've made this that goes on there. And then this goes on there, like that. And then what's going to happen? It's going to have a lot more. It's going to need a lot more. Um, it's going to take a lot more for the oil to go all the way up to there. Yeah. So, so, so that's that's what we've just made. And then what we're going to do? We're going to put pieces of aluminium facing downwards like that. So if the air, as the air goes past it, it collects up the oil and puts it back in the sump. And that was a Miller idea. Miller made his breathers on the side of the Offenhauser and that was one of his ideas, putting these things in like that to collect the oil. So that's what we're going to try anyway. Okay. That's it, we put that on the right way round. And um, I'm now about to take the twin calm off, put that on, and then we'll make the throttle linkage up and then sort out how we're gonna get that. But I'm not gonna alter that at all, so that if this don't work, we can put that back. But if we do put that back, on the suggestion of one of our followers, I'm going to put a balance pipe between there. I mean, I realise how important balance pipes are, but until you mentioned it, to be honest, I never thought about it. And I'm sure it would equalise it all out and make the car run a lot better. So we're going to make up some aluminium bosses to go on there, and we're going to do that. We're going to do that before we go to Goodwood, so that if that don't work, I can put all that lot back, and we're going to have a little bit of advantage of a balance pipe. So that's my next job. In the meantime, John's working on the catch tank. So, here we go. I've made the gaskets for there. So they're all done. And uh, that's it, really.
set. Yeah, what we do now, we cut the sections out and see what it looks like. Um, that's probably it for a minute. This is we're going to start it on the miller carburetor. We've connected up the fuel. We haven't done the fuel throttle linkage from there to there, but we, we, that's in hand. But seeing as it's coming up to lunchtime, we thought we'd start it up and see if it will actually run. Poor job. Right, a good word. Testing. This normally ends just there. And I think going round right handers really fast, it was throwing the oil up and it was leaking out. So we decided to extend it up. Which is what we've done. We've, John has made this piece here to extend it up. But not only that, inside you'll see there's pieces of alley facing down at an angle so obviously as the air goes by if it's got any oil in it hopefully those pieces of alley will trap it which is a thing that um, Miller did on his breathers on his um, Miller racing cars so that's the original top which just goes back now with the regulations they insist that you have a catch tank so what we've done, we've cut a catch, cut a crystal can in half, push them together to have the amount that you need for the regulations, and then that's going to go there. So we'll make a special clip or something to hold that there, and then we'll have a piece of rubber going in there and onto there. Obviously, we've got to, you know, that will go on to there. So that gives us a catch tank. The next thing that we're going to need is a catch tank for the radiator. Now, we've got that, and we've got that. So out of those things, we'll make something for the, um, for the catch, catch tank for the radiator. The yeah, I think so. I think we, we could probably get away with a bit, but... You know, let's be sensible. We don't want to be um, trying to do anything silly. You've always got to keep the scrutineers happy. You know, if they don't think you're making an effort, then they, 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 they'll have a go at you. But you make an effort and they'll help you as much as they can. So that's that. So now, 
we fitted the single carburetor and it feels fabulous. Now I've only driven it up the field, so you can't get the true thing. And absolutely flat out, it did miss a little bit. But I think that was only because it was sort of clearing itself out. But this feels much better, much, much better than the twin carburetors. Now this bit here and this bit here are strictly for an aeroplane because obviously the thing freezes and it freezes the at uh, the barrel throttle. So we could do away with all of that, but we've got to get some heat into that. So what I intend to do, previously, when we did the twin carburetors, we made this up. The carburetor goes on there, and, and we box that in with um, um, aluminium, two mil, and then we put a couple of things, and then the oil goes into there, which is what that's for. But unfortunately, we don't know what's in there and it's been kicking around for years. So if we was to put oil into there and oil out, it would probably be, have a load of bits in it and we can't be guaranteeing that we're not putting dirt into the engine. Whereas if we do this, we know it's not. So my intention is to machine that off because we're not going to put water into it, whatever happens. So we're going to machine that off and look at what's underneath there. But what I think we'll do, we'll cut it off and put it up the other way. So in other words, instead of it going like that, it will go like that. And then we'll put this on with a carburetor and we'll get this oil thing as near the carburetor as possible. So when you start the engine, the oil running through there will quickly warm that lot up and there'll be no fear of this icing up. But I must say, I drove it down the field and it wasn't warm much then and it didn't stick. But I think that would be a good move. Um, and, and we've done it before because on the twin carburetors, we made, that's what we made up to take the twin carburetors. So I think if we can put that about there and then that manifold will just come off and go up to there, that would be a good thing. And also, we had a bit of a problem with these oil things because we're going to be using them and it would be quite nice to bring the carburetor this way a little bit so we might be able to just angle that slightly and get it away from the crankcase so we can get the oil pipes to this and I want to get that as near the carburetor as possible so you know when we're warming it up we can sit and warm it up and know that oil is flowing through there and the minute oil gets a bit warm it will soak down and there won't be no fear of this freezing so that's our plan. Between now and Goodwood, we're not going to make any pistons. We've decided that is too ambitious, but we're going to do it, but not for Goodwood. But I think we could make that for Goodwood because we've got all the bits we need. All we need is a TIG welder, and we're not going to touch that one anyway. This will stay as it is. So if it doesn't work, we go to that. But if it works, it'll be good. And I looked at all the pictures, I started looking at the pictures in the Miller book and things like that, and all the cars, they don't have any of this. This is purely aircraft, this is. On the, in the Miller book, they go like that to the carburetor there. So that's what we're going to have if we can do it. So we've got the thing there, and we're going to start cutting out. But all this worked beautifully. Didn't leak, didn't um, flood. It didn't do anything. We just started it up, and it... And it ticked over and it was absolutely lovely and I booted it and it spun its wheels so over the weekend I'm going to try and get all this done as much as we can and over the weekend I'll put some miles on the road you know I'll go for a sort of 20 mile ride or something let's hope it's not raining and freezing cold um, and that's it but it was no problem to do that and I haven't taken anything off the twin car so if this, if this car ran and has been as good as it is we would put the twin carburetors back, but we ain't going to do that. So um, I think, you know, I don't think the carburetors will ever go back on this car. But we'll see. We'll see. What we're going to do, we're going to machine a flat on there so we can see what's inside there. And we're going to machine a flat on there. And eventually we're going to take all that off. And this is going to be there. So when it goes on the car, it'll be like that. And then this will be sticking out the bottom. But it won't be with that one, it'll be with this one, 
which is brand new. So when we weld it all up and everything, we know there's no dirt in there. So this is totally new experimental. That then. bit there is the same as the ones on the twin carb, which we yeah. made up previously. But that, that's the single carb set upon it now, yes. you're not going to meddle with that. No, and we'll okay. leave that alone. But if this all looks like a success, and we get it done in time, we'll try this up the road, and I think this will be a better design. Because basically that was designed for an aeroplane, which obviously when it's up in the sky it's freezing cold and everything. But we've still got to have some heat. But if you notice, say that's where the heat is, that's where the oil will run in there, where we put a cover on it. And that's how close the carburetor is, look. So it's much closer, so the heat's going to transfer down there much quicker. Okay. And, we, and then, you know, obviously that have a hole drilled in it and everything. Quite a lot of work, so you're going to have to be here, Susie, and, and um, take some film, because if you don't take the film, they won't know what we're doing, will they? <laughs> exactly going on here boys well you see what we're going to do we're going to take them off and we're going to alter this so that it's up the other way and yeah. then we're going to shorten that down and we're going to get the the new one of them which is what i've been showing you nearer to the carburetor as near there as we can get it okay so that when the oil circulates through it warms that bit up a bit lively and stops the barrel oh. throttle sticking I don't, right. think, I don't think we'll have any trouble with the barrel frog, but all of that lot is only because it's in an aeroplane. Yeah, yeah, And they've yeah. got to get that warm. Well, there's not really a lot of point in us having all of that. Lovely bit of pattern making, though. I yeah. mean, it shows you how good the crankcase is. If that's the, if that's the manifold, I mean, look at that thing. It's absolutely beautiful. But again, I'm saying it, keep saying it, the old Americans, they had some wonderful tradesmen, you know from all over the world. So we had a lovely message from somebody in America who's obviously got a Hall and Scott, and he's obviously got the same carburetor as us, and he said it's very good, but when he starts it up first of all, it sticks because it freezes. Well, the minute we started it up, exactly what he said happened. But again, when it warmed up a little bit, it, um, it was all right. But I thought, well, you know, I put my hand on there, and it was lovely and warm. You know, I put my hand on it, lovely and warm. Put my hand on there, freezing cold. Well, the heat from the engine has got to warm all that lot up to get down to the carburetor. So I'm thinking, I look at that, and I think, well, you know, that's aeroplane. It has water going through it. We haven't got water going through it. That's just there. And then that one there has oil going through it. And again... We, we can do that, but we're a bit concerned about that because inside there, we don't know what's in there. And uh, we disconnected the um, oil cooler or the oil warmer and the oil pressure went up, so we've got a problem there. We'll have to, but we have got an adjustment, so we can do that. So I'm looking at it and thinking, right, so the next thing I do, I look in the Miller book and I look at, you know, all the carburetors and things on the various Millers. And obviously they ain't got all that, and they ain't got all that, because they're going to... Because they're cars. Because they're cars. So I thought, well, I think that we should do something. Yeah, so, so yesterday we did some of John machining that, yes, didn't we? Yes, John machined it off. Last night I stayed till 8 o'clock, filing that all up to get the shape. What a lovely shape. And of course, needless to say, the pattern making was absolutely fantastic. Let me just show you this bit. Now you've got to realise that this is a core that's doing this, so so obviously that's the main bit, and then you've got a core which will be supported on them things, the core bits. But look at that thickness. I mean that is just so good. That is the best pattern. So how maker. does that fit? Oh, so that, that was that, that, that was Okay, that. it's that thickness. Okay, yeah. Right, so so now we take that off 
and we say, right, we ain't going to use that anyway as a ton. So then what we do then, we take that off, turn that over like that, turn that over like that. Then so what we did was, we got it all down to casting and we cut that round there and turned it round 90 degrees. And John welded it all up and it hasn't moved an inch. We're going to obviously have to rub that a little bit more because it's not quite flat, but nothing. So that's going to go on there like that. And then the carburetor's going to go on there. Okay. So that's going to look very much like a car job rather than an aeroplane job. Oh, fantastic. I think that's going to look really nice. So we get the carburetor on there and that's it. Okay, good. Oh, done in a flash. So this is the catch tank? Yeah, well no, this is this is the new breather. Oh, we looked at this yesterday. And it's got the, you know, thing. Well, that's all done now. And then yep. obviously we put a section on it to go into the catch tank. Yeah. So luckily we used a Castrol, a classic Castrol oil can, cut it up and pushed it together. So, you know, it's like half the size, and that's half a gallon. So that's basically. no oil's going to go splatting anywhere then? No. Because it... Oh, hopefully it gets stopped up there. Yeah. And then any dribble will come out into the can. Yes, which Perfect. is what a catch tank's for. I don't think anything will come out in the can. The only time that will come out in the can is if the engine was to go wrong, which is obviously what it's for. Right. This is going to be mounted to take the... The water. Water into... So... So that will be, I think, keeping the scrutineers happy. Yeah. The next thing we've got to do is get in touch with, again, one of our lovely followers who sent us pictures of a Manx Norton rocker, and it's, it's very similar to that. It relies on rubbing on a bit of stuff. And he said he's got some magic um, sort of rubber that works, which they've been experimenting, obviously, for years. So he said, give us a ring and I'll send you some pretty, completely free of charge to help us, so that'd be good. So instead of having that um, felt in there. In the groove. In the yeah. groove, we'll have a sort of o ringy type stuff, which seems to work on Manx Nortons. And he sent us a photograph of a Manx Norton, you know, with the rockers, and it's exactly the same problem as we got. Oh, okay, we'll get to ring him today so, then. So we'll ring him today and get him to send us some of that stuff if we could. Um, so that might cure that. We're obviously going to have to reduce the oil pressure because before we used to have going into that thing on the um, carburetor to warm it up or cool the oil down. Well, we've done away with that, so the oil pressure's gone up, so we'll have to back the oil pressure off. So I think it's uh, with these, um, what we're doing, it's two for show, one for go. Take anything off, John, you don't reckon? No, nah, look, we got, well, saying that, we, we are, you know, we're, we're quite on it. Yeah, well, what we do, we do it really properly and get it dead in the right place. Yeah. We, don't want it we mock it before we weld it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. So yeah. what John's doing now is making a flange for that. Here it is. Now the reason we're oh, doing what a lovely flange. Yeah. Now the reason we're doing this is because you know these carburetors, you know what that engine with all its torque, it tends to go like that, and we don't want it to throw the carburetor off and break the manifold. So instead of just cutting it off, we could just cut that off and weld it onto there. But so that's know, the old one. That's the old one. We could just oh, chop that the off. The new one we've not done yet. No. Well, that's what he's making. He's making a new flange for this. But anyway, so that's not being used at okay. all. Forget okay. that. And we're not having the oil going into there to cool the oil and um, warm the manifold. Because I'm convinced that if we reduce that manifold down to that, it's going to be a lot better because the heat is going to go from there down there much, much quicker. Oh. So, so I don't think we need... And the other problem with that, when you add the oil coming out of there and in to the manifold and going back into the engine, mm -hmm. it was just throwing oil. That just goes literally back into the engine. So again, you're getting a load of oil poured in the engine, which the dry sump pump's got to suck out unnecessarily. 
So we decided not to have that. Okay. But the oil price has gone up by, you know, like 10 or 15 pounds. So we now have to obviously reduce the oil back to what we had before. But we're going to reduce it even more, I think, because originally it only had 14 psi, because it's got the smallest oil pump you've ever seen in the original engine. So obviously we've got to be careful here because we're modifying the car before going to Goodwood. Now, if I drive it up the road and it don't feel right, we can easily put the twin carburetors back. And if we do put the twin carburetors back, we'll put a balance, we'll put a balance um, tube in it. And I reckon that'll improve it, which is another one of our followers suggested. And can't we use just the single carburetor on the old manifold? No, no. Okay. So we, put it, we can put, we haven't touched any of that, nothing. We could just literally put that back on the car, probably take us an hour, I would think, or less. So we can go back to exactly as we were when we were testing it at Goodwood. Okay, but, but with a balance point. We get all this working, the weekend, I'll drain the petrol out of it and put some as the petrol in it. <laughs> and, but before I do that, I'll try it with a good petrol, and then I'll put the as the petrol in, and if it makes absolutely no difference, we'll run on cheap petrol, because there's no point in putting 100 octane petrol in a five to one compression vehicle. We ain't going to do the pistons before Goodwood, but we're going to do them. That's my next big project. We'll be making pistons. And hopefully, old Susie will be here to show you how we make the pattern, how we machine it. And all we've got to do is get some piston rings. And another one of our followers said he sure he could find us some rings. But we'll see how we get on with that.